I'm joined here at Barnabra with um, the proprietress, uh, Dr. Geraldine Kidd. And uh, it's always kind of unusual. It's always usual to hear how somebody changes one life and starts another. Your life changed a little bit more. You started off as the proprietress of, of Barnabra, which is a truly wonderful, <laughs> wonderful venue. And I really mean that. Um, and you went to academia. Yes. Uh, so you, you came the other way around. But yes. um, Barnabra is just, a, it's my first time here. And I have to say, I'm absolutely blown away. I'm blown away with the concept, um, the use of artisan food here, the use that nothing is wasted, everything is fresh, um, everything tastes so good. I think you have such a happy chef here with a, an exquisite <laughs> palate. And uh, I think you've gotten the, I think you've gotten it right here. So what's part of Bro to you? I started off at quite a young age, really, having an allotment in Dublin, where I came from originally. Um, everybody else on the allotment area was like in their 60s and 70s and I was in my 20s then so I did have a genuine interest in everything about food uh, where growing it, um, eating it particularly <laughs> um, so I suppose Barn and Brow I always wanted to have hens I always wanted to grow vegetables I always wanted to have donkeys uh, I used to live in suburbia in Dublin so this was great uh, opportunity and then a huge challenge I thought it was going to be quite simple it wasn't at all <laughs> I can imagine and Barn and Brow of course um the meaning of Barnabra, if I'm not mistaken, is... Yeah. Barnabra is an anglicisation of the words uh, Barnabra, Barnabra, which means top or gap in the fairy fort. So we've kind of played with that, really. We think uh, that it means that this fairy is still around. Um, adding a little something to the ambience here, uh, it's been the scene of so many celebrations. We think the fairies have had contribution to that as well. And a lot of fairy-like stuff goes on late at night here, too. I can yeah. imagine, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Especially with that wonderful bar that you have up there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's such a charming, charming place. And I think you've, you've restored um, with the courtyard here is, uh, is absolutely amazing. Yeah. What, you, what you've managed to do with both bringing the the environment that you have that you that you had here with the country house and using the decking very cleverly and it's it's not it's not ugly it's not offensive i think everything melts together so beautifully mm. uh, and what it really amazed me is that you can sleep 90 people here yes it's sort of extended and expanded we do have self-catering cottages here as well um the rooms were here well they weren't here they had no roof when i came and we, we couldn't exactly change too much so they've been fitted into these spaces that already existed really so it's all quite organic in a way not really any great master plan and and very very curtailed by how much money we had spent which was never ever enough so it's kind of it's turned out to be quirky. That's the word people keep using about it. You know? it it's quirky. Yeah. It's charming. It has its it, own style. You know, very much so. Yeah. Very much so. And there's not a there's not an adjective I could convey <laughs> that would that would probably really portray this place. It really is a place to come and see. I think. Mm. Um, What's the next plan? You're going from strength to strength. Hundreds of weddings here now. Over the year. Yeah, I suppose we have put hundreds of weddings through our hands all right over the years, and we keep coming up with sort of new ideas for the weddings. I don't know where the Stuart who's our fabulous chef that we're so lucky to have here. Really, um, he trained in a Michelin star restaurant in Kent for six years and has really co contributed and improved everything we do here. But we do a thing called food to share. People are, you know, people are looking for something different with weddings. They're looking for um, more relaxed uh, type weddings rather than formal sit down meals. So we do this thing called food to share, which is kind of anti-pasty platters that are passed around family style, wonderful icebreakers. And we keep kind of changing the themes of those. Sometimes they're a bit Italian, sometimes they're a bit Eastern. Um, so that gives mm -hmm. people something to work towards yeah. when they're trying to do something yeah. different. So the filling should be nice and small, uh, soft and creamy. Yeah, it is. And the mushrooms, nice it is. and this looks meaty. The Just smell here. from this, the scent from this is just amazing. That is really tasty. I suppose know? really we always get the feeling that weddings are conveyor belt food. Yeah. It's the, yeah. Um, it's the beef, it's the slab, it's yeah. this, it's yeah. that. Um, what I really was amazed with and so impressed with was the menu here yeah. and, and how he has um, achieved what he's bringing in from the garden and brought it into the menu mm. and ensuring that everybody is getting a unique meal mm. that nothing is yeah. so yeah. mass produced. We have a lovely Victorian wall garden there that Liam, um, our trusty gardener, has, you know, would like to spend all day and he doesn't get time quite to do that but he's produced quite a lot of really good stuff that Stuart uses very well. Personally I don't want to preside over mediocrity and I think that's why Stuart and I get along so well too because he, he's 
totally perfectionist, very high standards, and it, it has a free reign here to do what he wants to do. So many of um, our wedding guests tell us it's the best food by far that they've ever had at a wedding, and even not at a wedding, you know, so we're getting quite rave mm -hmm. reviews, and that's great. And so <laughs> popular great. now for Sunday lunch as well. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. a lot of good reviews lately too. So what's the know? next big plan? There's um, not going to be a, I'm not going to come back here in, in next month and see 200 think, bedrooms and see no, a big spa. No, no. I think I just kind of like to perfect things and slightly update certain certain things. And so it's, um, you know, there's, there's still development area there and the gardens to do um, that could be done. We are, we've spent quite a bit of money on the gardens in the last few years, getting a little theme going there, trying to have colour and stuff all year round, um, trying to develop the winter actually, you know. So mm. I suppose we're past the stage of doing huge stuff. We're, we're actually trying to build on what we have mm -hmm. very much you know it's extremely charming here um i love it here <laughs> i'm definitely you. coming back <laughs> i am so impressed with the place it sums up for me what cork has to offer uh, and i think you've done that so well here thank you and as somebody that writes about food i am so um i'm such a big fan of your chef he has a very educated palate yes and yes. you can see that in in what he's doing how he's producing what, what's going on in the kitchen how nothing is wasted. Yeah. Um, I love that you have a tiny waste bin in your kitchen. <laughs> nothing is wasted. I think that's so important. Yeah. Uh, and, and I wish you, I genuinely wish you lots of success here.